Hello and welcome to this session on cloud integrations with Oracle SOA Suite. My name is Rajesh Raheja and I'm going to show you how simple it is to invoke a SaaS web service using the Oracle SOA Suite components. In this video, I will demonstrate the steps involved in invoking an API on the Oracle Right Now cloud service. Our task for this demo is to create a contact in the Oracle Right Now cloud service using a SOAP web service call. To do this, there are seven steps I'm going to go through. Step one is to obtain the Right Now credentials, the VISTL, and the Certificate Authority SSL certificate. Step two is to import the CA SSL certificate to the WebLogic server CA Trust Store. This allows our web service client to trust the Right Now server and enable secure HTTPS connections. Step three is to create a new SOA composite with a partner link to reference the Right Now web service visitor. Step four is to create an invoke activity, uh, invoking the actual create operation and creating a transform activity from the source to the target. Step five is to create and populate the client info header variable that needs to be sent along with every SOAP message to the Right Now service. Step six is to attach the security policy and store the credentials for the Right Now service. And finally, step seven is to deploy and test the composite and check if the contact has been created in the Right Now system. The first thing we would do is to check if the contact that we are going to create already exists. So I'm going to go to the contact quick search and search for a given contact, say Ellison. There is no contact that is existing in the Right Now systems. The Right Now developer community has a lot of good documentation on the web services and the APIs that need to be used. To get a hold of the Vistal, we just go through the getting started and there is a section on Vistal retrieval that gives you this URL pattern of that Vistal that you need to retrieve. In our case, the host name is integration test. So I have bookmarked that. So here is the endpoint I'm invoking and then view the certificate. So in this case, we are interested in storing this certificate authority and marking it as trusted in the WebLogic server. This is my WebLogic server box. This is the key tool command I'm going to run. And the certificate was added to the key store. In JDeveloper, I'm going to create a new project. So our project. and I'm going to specify a Beeple process. And you can see that I'm going to expose that as a SOAP service. Just going to make it into a synchronous Beeple process. One of the things that we are going to do is add a couple of fields that we want to synchronize over to the Right Now system. So if you look at the create contact Vistal, which imports the create contact XSD. So I'm just going to copy and create four input fields. I'm going to call it first name, last name, say street address, and say zip code, and go back to my composite. We can now import the web service as an external reference, and I'm going to call this as the right now reference, and provide it with the Vistal that we got from the right now site. Let's tie the Beeple process. Let's go in to the Beeple process. So we're going to put in an invoke activity and tie the invoke activity to the reference and specify the actual operation to invoke. And you can see here the operation is already defaulted to create, but these are the polymorphic operations. And for each of the inputs and outputs, I'm just going to default some 
global variables that we can populate in the mapping. Now, we also need some session headers that need to be sent in as part of every web service invocation. So what you could do is to define a variable that can hold that particular header. Let's go in and define a variable. Let's call that variable as the header variable. And we could define it as a message type. And since we know that it requires client info header, we could look at our partner link right now reference And as you can see, there is a client info header variable, which we could use. So let's go ahead and click OK to that. So now with every SOAP invocation, this header variable will be sent along in the web service call. Let's go ahead and provide the mapping using the transform activity that will transform the four fields of the input to the right now variable. And in the transformation, I'm going to select the source as the input variable payload. And the target is going to be the invoke right now create input variable. We need to create a mapping file, which is an XSL file. And we are going to create this mapping file now. As you can see, the right now has this polymorphic behavior of the create operation that can take in any object of type Rn objects. To get to the real object that I want to create, we can right click and select the substitution element or type. And it now shows you all the objects that are derived from this Rn object. And in this case, we want to select contact. And so once we create that, you can see the XSI type has been set on that node to the contact. And now we see the real useful information regarding all the contact details that I would want to pass information to. So we can map the first name to name first, last name to name last. Uh, let's look for address. So we can map the street address to street and zip code to postal code and save. I'm going to put an assign activity. And here what I'm going to do is to select that header variable and assign some literal value to the field that represents the client info header. And this is the field, the app ID that we need to set. I'm going to set it to an expression. Right now requires a WSS username token to be sent over SSL. Select a client policy. Let's configure the key that is to be used by that OWSM policy. So let's give it uh, a value of right now key. So we are done on the J developer side. Let's first deploy it and then we can do the rest of the work on the server. And I have a partition created for this project. You can see here that it's first going to compile and then deploy. The next step that we need to complete is to just make sure that the OWSM policy does not send timestamp, which can cause the right now system to fail because it does not expect the timestamp. That can be found in the WebLogic server web service policies. And here we are looking for a policy that has been associated with our service client, which is SSL enabled. And so let's look at this particular policy that we had attached, which is the username token over SSL. So let's edit that. And you can see that the policy has an assertion, the WS security token over SSL, and that assertion has an include timestamp mark checked, which is going to send the timestamp. So we are going to uncheck that and validate it. Here we are on the test web service page, and I'm going to enter the four parameters. 
let's say I put Redwood Shores and the zip code and let's test the service. Here you see that we have a result. We can launch the flow trace and see the actual flow of the message which went from our endpoint to the Beeple component to the right now web service. And here we had Ellison. We did not find any records earlier. And now we see a record has been created with all the details that we had sent in. That's how easy it is to invoke a cloud service from the Oracle SOA suite. That's it. I hope this session has been useful and I look forward to your feedback on our social media channels. Thank you for your time. Mm -hmm.